Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your host, Chris Corey with Shadows Techland. So, I've been using Proxmox for about a week or so. Well, actually about two weeks now for my virtual lab needs. Wanted to go over a uh, fairly important topic that I do believe um, it's a little convoluted in some of the information, which is backup and restore and how that works with Proxmox and the couple options that you do have. So regarding the backup, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do a local backup, which would have the virtual machines, the virtual disks saved onto the local store of the Proxmox host itself, or you can go ahead and use some sort of uh, network location, which is what I use. Now, I do have Proxmox installed excuse me, in ZFS using three 500 gig SSDs using uh, RAID Z1, which is basically a ZSS version of RAID 5, which is one drive failover. And then you still have the high IOPS of uh, all the drives combined, <coughs> excuse me. So in order to basically set up the backup location, so basically you already have installed Proxmox, you've configured it, you've logged in, you would go underneath the storage view tab and then data center and then down to storage right here and then you would click on add. Now there's a couple ways that you can go ahead and do this. Uh, you can use an NFS share which would be like from let's say Unraid or FreeNAS or some one of the other um, NAS software options there are out there or you can do uh, CFIS which is basically Samba shares. You can do iSCSI, and, or you can do ZFS or ZFS iSCSI. So a couple options that you have. Uh, personally, myself, I have an Unraid server with a Proxmox share set up on Unraid itself, and I am using Samba. So you would go ahead and click on CFIS. Uh, the ID would be um, whatever name that you want to give it. As you can see in the example right here, mine is on RAID storage. The server, so that would be the actual IP address of the server itself. And then the credentials, whatever username and password that you do have. In my case, uh, there's two accounts on my Unraid. There's the root, which is what I use to log in and administer. And then my share is done through another admin account that is not using the root account for security reasons. That way, um, the less access you have, the better, in case things were to happen. But that's for another discussion. I do digress. So as you can see, I'll go back to mine. So storage, IP address, my username, uh, my password, and then enable. Um, if you had particular nodes, then you can click on that. And then one thing that you do want to make note of is max backups. Uh, max backups, that is not the number of backups that you can have total. That is how many you can have per VM. In my case, I only am allowing one due to the fact that my changes don't happen very often. And then I do have it scheduled for my backups, which I will also go over as well in another location here in just a moment. So every VM that I have that I deem that I want to back up, which is basically all my production VMs, I only can get one copy, and then I have it set every week to go ahead and uh, make a backup, and then I will delete the old copy. Um, that's due to the fact that uh, less space that is needed, and honestly, my VMs don't change that often to where I don't need to have multiple different copies out there. That can just get a little ridiculous, but that's just me. Everyone has their own uh, way of what works for them. And then content-wise, whatever you want to back up, I just go ahead and click um, all options. You can go ahead and use whatever works best for you. And that's basic. So you'll have, in, as you can see, there's three storage locations. There's local. And then there is local ZFS, which is local is basically where you will store your ISOs for um, installation media, for whatever virtual machine that you are working on, containers, things of that nature. 
local ZFI ZFS. That is where the virtual machine hard drive virtual disks store themselves. And then of course my Unraid storage, which is my share to where my VM backups go to. So if you go under local and then content, there's a couple ways that you can go ahead and you can get the installation ISOs onto your Proxmox host. Um, there's the traditional just web GUI upload, select, and then you can go ahead and go to whatever it is that you want to go to and upload it. Otherwise, you can use whatever your favorite um, SSH tool, um, FileZilla, WinSAP, whatever, and you can go through and you can uh, go ahead and upload that way. Then as you can see under local ZFS, that's where all of my disks are. And each one of these represents a different VM. And then you'll see right here, these are the actual hard disks themselves, which are backed up to my unwrite chair. And it's actually super duper easy to go ahead and restore. So when I went ahead and basically did on the uh, restoration is you, um, there's a couple ways obviously. So if you are migrating, you can go ahead like to a new host, let's say. Let's say you went ahead and built a new server and you're decommissioning the old one. If you store it locally, you will need to somehow get those um, backup disks and information like go ahead and uh, download the backups through when SCP or FileZilla or something of that nature, or you can go ahead and use an external, whatever your case is, you've got to get those virtual backups onto another medium because you need to be able to move them to the new host. In my case, I was going ahead and using the same host, same hardware, the only difference is my hard drives, the Proxmox was installed on. So what I went ahead and did, pulled the eights, put the of three 500 gig SSDs in, reinstall Proxmox, go ahead and you, at that point, log in. You would configure the backup share, which I already showed you how to go ahead and do, depending on your needs, that will change. So whether it's CFIS, um, Samba, NFS share, whatever the case may be, put in that information, and then you would go ahead and go over to your store, in my case this is Unraid, and then you would see your hard drives, and then at that point in time it's super ridiculously easy. Uh, one thing I want to see here, one sec. Um, which one can I go ahead and do? And then you would say restore. And one of the nice things that it will go ahead and do for you is it will pull over um, all. So when you back up a virtual machine, it backs up the machine itself, the virtual disks, passwords, configurations, any changes that you've made. It will go ahead and pull all of that over. So all you have to do is make sure that the installation media is back exactly the way that it was configured, which I can show you that here in a minute. So you would click on local ZFS in my case, and then um, you would go ahead and restore. You can do start after restore as well, and then obviously um, go ahead and let it go. It'll take a few minutes depending on whatever your um, network traffic configuration is, however fast. That's basically determined by your layout of your uh, network and machines. So you wait a couple minutes. The whole entire restoration process to basically get my Proxmox up and running with all of my machine virtual machines, which I've got about 20. Now, not all of them are on. I will be going over, doing another video going over each one and what they do and what I'm using them for. Uh, go ahead and keep tuned in for that. That will be my next video I will be doing later. And basically, you just wait a couple minutes for this to happen. Now, the whole restoration process probably took me about an hour, 
hour and a half due to the fact that uh, I've got quite a few machines so it takes a little bit of time Did I? Heck here. Looks like I'm gonna have to probably do that. Oh wait, there it is. Sorry about that. I accidentally clicked out of my restore. So it looks like it's still going. You can see it's actually a fairly quick process. But I think it was about hour, hour and a half to do all of them due to the fact I've got 20 plus VMs. And then you can see that it says task OK, meaning that the restoration is complete. And I went ahead and restored it. And then you can see right here, this is the virtual machine that I just restored. I did it a copy of another one just so I could show you guys the process. So I will not be using this. One stipulation that I found is when you are going through and restoring these VMs, you need to make sure that all of the media that is needed for the VM is working. So as an example, uh, let me see here. So as you can see, that you'll have the installation, which is the media that was used in order to install the virtual machine to begin with. So this is a um, Windows 10 virtual machine and it is Windows 10 version 2004 and then I've got a, another ISO um, SATA drive, CD-ROM drive and that is for the virtual I.O. Um, drivers so it installs the balloon driver, virtual networks any other drivers that are needed for the machine to work correctly and then I also have a, another CD-ROM here, which is the um, KMS, so the activation for Windows 10 as well. If you go through and you do the restore and it ends up whining and you see a red error down here, chances are you probably are missing the installation media or some sort of media that is needed that you added and set up when you actually did the backup itself. So in order to fix that, make sure that you've obviously already uploaded that installation media. And then also make sure that any extra uh, ISOs that are associated with it are also added. Sometimes all you'll need to do is make sure after you've uploaded it, if you do need to, is to go into here and then um, use CD, your storage, which would be local, if that's where it's, it's the installation media is actually stored. And then the ISO itself, you would just go and use the drop down. So in my case, it'd be local, and then whatever it is that it's wanting for that it needs, and then that should go ahead and load it for you. And that's basically it. It's pretty short and to the point. Another thing that's really cool that I do like, uh, what I did in one of my backups as well, is the fact that you can do templates. So you can take a VM that you've already loaded. In my case, I have a Windows 10 VM that uh, everything that's already activated, it's ready to go. It has um, all of my small apps already installed and ready to go. So I don't have to go through and do this every bloody time. The only thing that I have to do is after I create the clone the template, 
is I have to change the host name to something different, that way it won't whine, and there's no DNS issues, which is pretty cool. Another thing that's also really kind of neat as well is there is, a, a, it's beta, so keep that in mind, but Proxmox has come out with a backup server that is actually you can use in order to have more control and it gives you more stats and things of that nature. I haven't really done much with it yet due to the fact that I find the backups, the configuration and restore through Proxmox Web GUI. I find that intuitive enough myself that I don't really need it. Not saying that you can't, but it is definitely a, definitely a, a cool tool that you can use in order to uh, take care of your backups as well. If you guys have any other questions, definitely feel free to reach out on my social media. I will leave a link in the description. And uh, other than that, have a good day, and I will talk to you guys later.